take the number 11 and we'll multiply it by the number 45. Now notice first of all that everything is lined up just like as if we were going to add these. The columns are lined up, everything is nice and, and tidy. Now in the past problems, in the previous lessons, we have learned to do things like multiplying 11 times 5. What did we do? We said 5 times 1, we write the number down, 5 times this number, we write the number down, and then we are done. So in the first step of multiplying times a two-digit number, we do the same thing first. So the first step of this is exactly what you've already been doing. So you pretend that this 4 is just not here. It doesn't even exist. It's not there. So what we do is we say 5 times 1 is, and then we say that 5 times 1, of course, we know it's 5. So that goes right down, lined up in this column. Again, pretend the 4 is not there. Now we say 5 times this one, again, is 5. So that goes in this column. Now if the problem were just 11 times 5, then the answer would be 55. When we know that from our multiplication tables, we know that 11 times 5 is 55, so we would be done. So the first step is to pretend that this digit doesn't even exist and just write the numbers down the after you multiply them down below. Now what we have to do is multiply each of these digits times the 4. But what we're going to do before we multiply by a 4 is we're going to add a 0 in the right-hand column right here. Now, this zero isn't because we multiplied anything. I'm actually going to spend the, a lot of time explaining why we're putting the zero there. But for now, just trust me, we're, we have to put a zero when it's a two-digit number, and we multiply first the five times the one, then we drop down a line, we stick a zero all the way to the right, and then we multiply the fours. Let me finish the problem, and then I'm going to come back to showing you exactly why we have a zero there. So now that we've dropped the zero there, we then, again, pretend that the five is not even here. So again, four times, we always start in the right column, four times this one is four. Four times one is four, and that number gets written right here, right? Again, the five, pretend it's not there. Now we have the four times this one. So we multiply this times this, this digit, and then we do this times this digit right there, all right? And what do we get? Four times one is four. So then we shift over like this. So we have to kind of come over a column, kind of create a new column like that. Uh, there. So the zero goes because we have two digits and then we do four times one is four and then four times this one is four. Now what do we do? We have to actually add these together and do a plus sign here and add them up. Because basically the answer to this problem is going to have something to do with the five multiplying these digits and also something to do with the four multiplying these digits. And once we get it all done we add them together. Right? So now what we do is we just do straight column addition like always. We can write it as a separate problem if you want, but usually you just do it here. 5 plus 0 is 5, so that goes right below. 5 plus 4, you can tap it up, 6, 7, 8, 9. 5 plus 4 is 9, goes in this column. And then 4 plus, there's nothing here, so it's like a 0. 4 plus 0 is 0. So the answer to this is 495. If you get a calculator out, and put in 11 times 45, you're going to get an answer of 495. So this process is going to be the same for every two-digit times two-digit problem that we do. And actually, later on, we'll be doing multiplying times three digits and multiplying times four digits. And it'll be very similar. Basically, you'll multiply this digit times everything, and then you multiply this digit times everything. If we had another digit out in front, we would also have a third line multiplying this other digit that we would have times everything. And we would add everything together. The only thing I really need to make sure you understand is why did we put a zero here? Why did we do that? Okay, um, And the reason that we put that there is because, think about the 5. The 5 times the, uh, the 11 is 55. That's right. But when we multiply the 4, 4 times the 11, what did we get? 44. We know that 4 times this 11 is 44, but we had to stick a zero. Why did we do it? It's because even though in our mind when we're solving the problem we multiply the 1's on the top times the 4, Really what's happening is you're not really multiplying by 4 because this number is not really a 4. Remember 45, right? 45 is really 40 plus 5. So the value of this 4 is not really 4. The value of this 4 is really 40. So because we're not really multiplying by 4, we're multiplying by 40 when we get to this guy, then we can't just put 44 right under there because it's really 10 times bigger than that because we're really multiplying by 40. But we kind of ignore that when we do the problem. We just do the digits and then we just stick a zero here because when we multiply uh, by some multiple of 10 like that, we can just add a zero at the end. Let me go one step further and just remind you and ask you, what would happen if we multiplied over here? What if I asked you to tell me what is 11 times 
40. 11 times 40. We've done these kinds of problems you know, in the past because that's basically what we're doing. We're not multiplying by four, even though we kind of pretend that we are. It's really 40, right? This digit represents 40 because it's in the tens place. When you multiply a number times something that has a zero at the end, the easiest way to do it is you just pretend the zero is not there and you say, what's 11 times four? That's 44. When you get the answer, you stick a zero at the very end. So you get an answer of 440. So we do it by ignoring the zero, and then we say we get 44, and then we add the zero at the end. That's all that we did right here. What we did is we said, hey, this is really 40 plus five, right? But we're gonna ignore that and pretend that it's really four. So we'll get the digits 44, and we'll stick a zero at the end. And that's exactly what we do here. So. I just wanted you to know why we put that zero there. It's just because that digit there that we're multiplying by is not worth four. Really, it's worth 40. So whatever digits we get at the answer to that, we have to put a zero at the end, just like we put a zero at the end, you know, we, we multiply anything times 10. Think about what's five times 10? Five times 10 is 50. But a quick way to get it would be um, five times 10, if you were to do it like that, five times 10. You would just cover up the zero and say, what's five times one? That's five. And then you just put a zero back at the end. So you can kind of ignore the zeros and tuck them at the end. So here we're ignoring that this is really 40 and we're just sticking that back at the end. So now that you understand why we stick this zero here, I think we can just crank through a bunch of problems and kind of get additional practice and just know that that's the reason why we're doing it. Problem number two, let's take a look at the number 31 and we're multiplying it by 23. So the very first step, is to say, pretend the two is not there. It doesn't even exist. What is three times one? Three times one is three. It goes in this column. Again, the two's not there. What is three times this three over here? Three times three is nine. So the answer is nine, uh, 93 for that part. So if we were just multiplying 31 times three, the answer would be the 93. But now that we have another digit, and really we're multiplying by two for this digit, but we know the value of that two really isn't two, it's really 20 because 23 is really 20 plus three. So when we actually do the multiplication, the very first thing we do is drop a zero in there. Then we say, what is two times one? We ignore the three, the three's not there anymore. Two times one is two, and that goes here. And then again, the three is not there. Two times three, two times three we know is six, and that goes here. So again, if we were ignoring the value of this, we would say that the two times the 31 is 62. We just stick a zero at the end, and then we add them together. Right? So notice what you're really doing. You're finding out how much is 31 times three, that's this. And then you're also then next figuring out what is 20 times 31. And that's 620 because then you put the zero at the end on 62. So what do we get here? Three plus zero is three. Nine going up, we have 10, 11, right? Now here's the deal. When you add numbers, you know when you have a two digit number down there, you need to carry. And we have to do the same sort of thing. So we're gonna say nine, then we have 10, 11, then we put a one here, we then have to carry a one over there. That wasn't there in the original problem. Then we have six plus one, which is seven. So the answer is 713. So it gets very, it's very easy to get cluttered when you're doing your work, you see, because I had to carry a one here to do this addition. If you want, you can take this addition off to the side and do it, but it's actually easier to probably keep it all lined up, make sure you don't make any errors. But we're going to have to write our numbers neat with lots of space to make sure that when we put carry marks in that we will uh, not have a problem having enough room to do it. All right, let's take a look at problem number three. Let's take a look at uh, 30 and we're gonna multiply this by 32, 30 times 32. What is the first step? We ignore the three, it's not there. Two times zero, two times zero is zero. And then again, that's not there. Two times three, that's six. And that number goes in this column right there. Now we need to multiply by the three, but the first thing we do is we just add a zero. We do that right away every time, no matter what. And then we have three times, now we pretend the two is not there, three times the zero. Three times zero is zero, so this zero goes here. Two is not there. Three times three is nine, and that nine goes right here. Then we add up. All right, we add. And we say zero plus zero is zero, goes there. Six plus zero is six. And nine plus this zero is nine. And the answer you get is 960. Probably the, th the biggest piece of advice I can give you for solving these problems is number one, take your time. Number two, write neatly. 
uh, writing neatly is gonna be really, really helpful for you. Because when we carry things, you know, it's going to be difficult to keep things track, if, uh, keep track of things if you're not doing it carefully. So let's do that here. Let's say we have 22 and we'll multiply that by 44, right? So what do we get here? Again, the four is not here. So we say, what is four times two? Four times two is eight. So I'm gonna put the eight right down underneath. And then four times this two is also eight. So that goes right here as well. Now I have to multiply by this four, but before I do it, I put a zero in the right-hand column. Now I have four times this number two, which is again, eight. And then again, I have four times this two, which is again, eight, and it goes right here. And then I add all these together. All right, what do we have? Eight plus zero is eight. That's, we're done with that. Eight plus eight. Now you know that eight times two is 16. So eight plus eight is 16. But if you forget, just go up. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 is a two digit number, so put a six here and carry the one up here. And then we have eight plus one, which is nine. And the answer that you get is 968. Now one thing I want to try to get you in the habit of is when you multiply your numbers, probably when you get down here to adding, a lot of times you will have to carry like we did the one here. So notice I didn't put the eights like right under the line. I mean, here I kind of did because I knew what the problem was going to do, but you notice how this carry mark was kind of crunched up and it was hard to see. So I'm going to try to do the same thing that I'm going to ask you to do. When we multiply these problems, give yourself a little bit of space. When you write the numbers down, shift them down, just to keep them lined up, but just move them down so that we have room to do carries if we need to. So we have 968. All right, problem number five. Let's take a look. We have the number 40 and we're gonna multiply that by the number 12. All right, so what do we have? Again, the one is not there, so two times zero is zero. I'm not gonna write the zero right underneath because I may have to carry, so I'm gonna shift it down a little bit and put a zero. Then I say, what is two times four? Two times four is eight, and that goes right here. Now when I need to multiply by the one, the very first thing I do is I add a zero before I do anything, and then I say, what is one times zero? One times zero is zero, it goes here. And then I say next, what is one times four? One times four is four and it goes here. And then I'm going to add. So what do I get? Zero plus zero is zero. Eight plus zero is eight. And four plus this invisible zero is four. And so I get an answer of 480. Now in this case, I didn't have to carry, but at least I had the space to carry if I need to, because you're not gonna know when you're adding these numbers if you need to carry them ahead of time. You're not gonna know ahead of time. So for every problem, I want you get, to get in the habit of giving yourself just a little bit of space under the problem just when you start writing your numbers down. 480 is the answer. All right, we are over halfway done. This is problem number six. Let's take a look at the number 13 and we'll multiply by the number 13. All right, so what do we have here? In the right-hand column, we have three times three. Three times three is nine. We're not gonna write it here. We're gonna give ourselves a little bit of space and put a nine, all right? And then we're going to say that was three times three. Let's do three times one now. Three times one is three, it goes right here. Now we need to multiply by the one, but the first thing we do is add a zero here in the right column. Then three times one, or one times three is three, it goes right here. Then finally we have one times one, which is one, which goes off to the left here. Then we add. All right, so what do we get? We have nine plus zero, which is nine. Three plus three, you all know is six, so that goes right here. And then one plus zero is one. And so the answer to this is 169. So 13 times 13 is 169. And again, we're leaving a little bit of space here just in case when we add these, we can have room to carry it without cluttering up our paper. All right, we're almost done. Only four more problems. Let's take a look at 32 and we'll multiply by 21. 32 times 21. All right, so what do we have here? Here we have one times two, which is two. We're not gonna write it directly underneath. We'll give ourselves a little bit of space. Then one times three is three, which will go right here. Now we'd have to multiply by the two, but before we do any of that, since it's the second digit, we put a zero here. Now we have two times two, which is four, right there. And now we have two times three, which is six, right here. Then we have to add. And so what do we get? We have 
uh, 2 plus 0, which is still 2. And then 4, let's go up 5, 6, 7. 4 plus 3 is 7. And then 6 plus 0 is still 6. And so the answer is 672. 672. All right, only three more problems. Let's take a look at 12 and we'll multiply by 14. 12 multiplied by 14. What do we do? We're not doing anything with the one, we're doing four times two. Four times two is eight. We're not gonna write it right here. We'll give ourselves a little bit of room and put an eight. Then four times one is four and it goes right in front like this. Now we have to multiply by the one, so we add our zero. And now we say, what is one times two? One times two is two. And then we say, what is one times one? One times one is one. And then we add up what we got. And we say, what do we have? Eight plus zero is still eight. And then four going up five, six goes right here. And then one plus zero is still one. And so the answer is 168, 168. All right, only two more problems. Let's take a look at the number 31 and we'll multiply by 12, 31 times 12. So again, the one we cover up and we say two times one is two, which goes right here. And I probably should have given myself a little more space. Hopefully I have enough room there if I need it. Then I say two times three, two times that three is six, which goes then right here. Now I need to multiply by the one, so I add my single zero in the right column. And then I say one times one is one. And then I say one times three is three, and then I add. And so what am I going to get? I'm going to have two plus zero is two, six going up one more is seven, and three plus zero is three, and so the answer is 372. 372. All right, last problem. What about the number 40, and we'll multiply that by 22. 40 multiplied by 22. Again, cover up this left two. Two times zero is zero. Give ourselves a little bit of space. And then two times four is eight, which goes right next door. Now I have to multiply by this two, so I add a single zero. And then two times zero is zero. And then two times four is eight. Eight goes right here. And then I have to add the answer up. So what am I going to get? It's going to be zero plus zero is zero, eight plus zero is eight, and then eight plus zero up here is also eight, and so I get 880. So here we have introduced the concept of multiplying a two digit by a two digit number. And so a lot of times here, first of all, I wanted you to understand in the beginning that the process for it is exactly what we've done before. The only real difference is that when we multiply by that left digit, we have to add a zero here. We have to add a zero here. We've done it for every problem. And this zero is not coming out of nowhere. It's because when we multiply the four times this and the four times this, we're really not multiplying by four because the value of this is not four. The value is 40 because 45 is 40 plus five. So what we do though, is we pretend we're multiplying by four, we get our digits, and then we add a zero back at the end because we're really multiplying by 40. So we get the digits and we stick the zero at the end, just like five times 10 is really the same as five times one and add the zero at the end. So we're adding the zero at the end because the worth of this is in the tens place. So every time we multiply and get something, it's really 10 times bigger than that. That's why we put the zero at the end. And so we've gone through, and the other thing I wanted to stress is when you're adding these numbers, sometimes you have to carry. And so we wanna give ourselves a little bit of space when we do that. Now, what we need to do is get a lot of practice. I'd like you to solve these yourself. Make sure you write them neatly. Don't rush, don't scribble, give yourself room, make big problems. Don't make tiny little, little problems where you're, you're scribbling, you know? And then when you feel like you're getting the right answers, then follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice with multiplying two digit numbers times two digit numbers. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.